Hey folks, today's episode is brought to you by my other employer, Road and & Track, and their new experience offering, Rally U. I just did the Road & Track Route to Vine event. I helped make the route, and it was amazing. The hotels were awesome, the food was awesome, the people were awesome, and the cars were awesome. And their next event is called Rally U. It's July 15th and 16th up in the Seattle area. They've got first-class hotels, first-class dining. The R&T staff will be there to talk cars with everyone who participates. Uh, but most importantly, it's got a half-day driving school at Dirtfish, uh, the most premier rally school in uh, North America. This is going to be such an awesome event. It's, it's a little shorter than the route to Vine. It's only two days, July 15th and 16th, but there are beautiful uh, Washington roads on the route. You've got the rally school and the hotels and restaurants that they have booked are fantastic. I helped make the, the driving route for this one as well. It is going to be off the chain. So to check it out for yourself, go to roadandtrack.com slash experiences, and then just click on Rally U. They've got a few different experiences listed for stuff that's uh, upcoming later in the year, but Rally U is the one we're talking about today. So go to roadandtrack.com slash experiences, and then click on the Rally U icon. Get involved yourself. I've done Dirtfish. It's really, really cool. And uh, I've seen the uh, accommodations and the restaurants and the route for this one. It is going to be badass. We're also brought to you in part today by the Blackview dash cams. And now it's even easier to stay connected to your car and monitor it from everywhere with the Blackview DR750X two-channel LTE Plus. It is a mouthful, but each of those things mean something. Uh, each dash cam comes with an all-new Blackview SIM card, meaning you can easily connect your dash cam to the cloud straight out of the box. This two-channel Blackview dash cam comes with both front and rear cameras, and you can enjoy clear image quality day and night thanks to the full HD Sony Starvis image sensor at a wide 139 degree view angle. Blackview's LTE dash cam is what you really need if you're considering a cloud connected dash cam. It comes with the free Blackview app allowing you to connect to your cam directly over the cloud, get impact notifications, download videos to your phone, watch live view and more. And the SIM card, now included with the North American version of this camera, is all you need to connect to the Blackview cloud. The SIM card automatically activates upon powering up uh, after being inserted into the Blackview SIM reader. You just pick a data plan and get one month for free. And the ultimate peace of mind when you're away from your car is the cloud-connected dash cam with a parking mode accessory. Blackview automatically switches to parking mode to monitor your parked vehicle. Thanks to the video buffer. The few seconds leading to triggering events are also recorded. So when paired with the Blackview Cloud, parking mode lets your dash cam save event videos to the cloud in real time just as they happen. I love my Blackview dash cam. It makes me feel protected every time I leave my car parked, and I might even catch an amazing scene happening in front of me uh, like I did yesterday with the 12 o'clock boys going down Venice Boulevard uh, on their quad with passengers on the back. It was crazy. So go to Blackview, B-L-A-C-K-V-U-E dot com slash T-S-T to learn more about the Blackview DR750X two-channel LTE Plus dash cam and the Blackview SIM card. Use the promo code TIRE to get 10% off any Blackview dash cam. Free shipping for orders over $200. Blackview.com slash T-S-T Promo code TIRE, baby. It's all about that dash cam. We're also brought to you today in part by Evercoat. Evercoat is a, a new product for professionals and home mechanics. Maybe you've got a dent in your car that needs fixing, or maybe you're restoring an old classic. Evercoat Body Shop has the right product for your project. Evercoat takes the guesswork out of body work. It's a simple three-step process. Just prep, fill, 
and sand. Their perfect mix guide makes it easy to get the right ratio of filler and cream hardener. It dries in just 15 minutes and it'll sand down 50% faster than the competition. So there's less waiting around. Evercoat is the number one brand used by professionals and they can help you get professional results too. Find Evercoat Bonnie Shop products at your nearest Advance Auto Parts store. Man, this sounds like a good product. Go to Advance Auto Parts and ask for Evercoat Body Shop by name. It is, uh, whether you're a professional or just a home mechanic, it will be the perfect way for you to finish that body work on that project car and give you a flawless finish. And we're also brought to you in part today by Element. It's pronounced Element, but it's spelled L-M-N-T because it's techie, right? Can't have vowels. You must lose all vowels. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. It's true. The box says salty AF on it. It's very cheeky. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio with 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 600 milligrams of magnesium, but with none of the junk. No sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no filters, and no BS. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following a keto, low-carb, or paleo diet. Electrolyte deficiency or imbalances can cause headaches, cramps, fatigues, and weak fatigues, plural, and weakness. And when you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium, and you can lose up to seven grams per day. When you don't replace it, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue. Uh, I tried Element. I thought it was pretty tasty. Actually, uh, considering there's no sugar and considering there's none of those things that make drinks taste good, I was impressed. I drank some before my workout. I felt hydrated. I felt pretty good. A little less tired than normal. It was great. Uh, Element is used by everyone from moms and dads to NBA, NFL, and NHL players, Olympic athletes, Navy SEALs, and exercise enthusiasts. Element is so sure you'll love the product and come back for more. They're offering you a free Element sample pack. That's eight single serving packets for free. Just cover the cost of shipping, which is $5 in the U.S. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash tire. That is drink, D-R-I-N-K, L-M-N-T dot com slash tire. This deal is not available on their regular website. You must go to D-R-I-N-K, L-M-N-T dot com slash tire. Try it totally risk free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and we'll give you your money back. No questions asked. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Drink L-M-N-T dot com slash tire. Okay, folks, on this episode of the show, legendary uh, guitar player and vocalist John Oates is in studio. You might know him as half of Daryl Hall and John Oates, uh, but we know him actually as a, a serious gearhead. Uh, this dude has a really interesting collection of cars. He has a really interesting racing background. Uh, he has a very interesting car history, and we talked to him about all that, uh, plus his guitar car collection and some epic road stories on the smoking tire podcast john oates is here stick around i normally i just rent a regular car when i'm yeah. here but it's my birthday weekend so oh yeah they told me happy birthday Thank happy you. birthday one of our one just of our so fans said that one yeah. yeah yeah no yeah we saw donald on his birthday now yeah. here you are so we came out for that we're going to long beach on sunday um a visit with some friends um i went out to see rod emery oh yeah he's the him. man oh he's fantastic don't you have one of his cars yeah i do I what did he build you? He built me. I'll show you pictures of it if you want. Um, he built me a. a it's a. Fif, it's a '59 a B cab, but with a, a removable hardtop. Oh, cool! Which he chopped, and he raked the raked the windshield back uh -huh. and chopped it. And he is it a, the he is the man. Zach will find a picture of it. There it is. Is that yep, it? That's it. It's, yeah, it's, Zach, it is. Zach's on on the game yeah, with I this see one. That. I see that. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's bad. That looks like uh, looks like, that looks like Drew Phillips shot that. Of course it is. Is that Drew? And you know where it is. Of course, it's that the, the is Crest Highway. No, is it? Yeah. Oh, that is. Yeah, yeah I thought is. that first picture was Little yeah. Tahunga, but that is Angeles Crest. Well, the, what the, a great car! Look at it, that. Thing. It was a it was a B cab that Ooh. had the front end crushed in. 
It had um, when when he found it for me in Texas, it had hit a tree or a telephone pole, mm-hmm. so the whole front was basically stoved in. So when we started the project, so um, is that technically a salvage title? Is that how that is? No, no, is, I bought the car. Okay. It was still, <laughs> still had wheels and an yeah, engine, yeah. you know. Um, and so, uh, you know, I said to Rod, I said, Rod, you know, the A nose is so much nicer. I said, if we got to replace the nose, let's go for it. We're, mm. you know, we're starting, you know, this is a retro, you know, yeah. a resto mod anyway. So, yeah, well, he put an A nose on it, but not only did he put an A nose on it, but he raked the headlights back. Oh. He did, there's a lot of real subtle body See, that's work the thing. You got to, Rod's cars, you got to like park them next to the original if you really want to. That's exactly Otherwise, right. you don't, you, you don't even notice the stuff that and, he does yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's so subtle. And the, the, um. The that wind- is a man of taste. Yeah, he is. The windshield is is raked back as well. But in order to rake, the, it was really cool. He, he explained the whole thing to me. In order to rake the windshield back, had he cut the A-pillars and just done that, mm-hmm. the, the glass wouldn't have fit. It would have been a different shape, geometry-wise. Mm. He cut it about two or three inches in front of the cowl where the windshield meets the body. Yeah. And then he kind of slid it down yeah, a little He rotated bit? the whole dashboard. Oh, down. so I'm short anyway, and I wanted it to be. So he rotated the whole dashboard down, which brought the the actual windshield back. Oh, that's cool. But it maintained the geometry Whoa. of the original. That's, that's cool. really and interesting. The stuff he did is so unbelievable. Wow, that's then he, so cool. And he cut about four inches out of the top, you know, because that you know. Well, that, yeah, I, I didn't even notice because in the in this in this photo set which I saw when you got the car, I I didn't look that carefully. I didn't even realize coupe, that right? it, it looks like a coupe. Almost, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a chopped coupe. You don't even really yeah. notice. That it's a convertible. Yeah, and uh, he he get. I have a soft top for it, and I never put it on. You know, he told me he said you're never never going to take that top off, and it's true. Has it been on the whole time? The whole time. Yeah, I've had it about almost four years now. It looks good. It, it's it's really great. It's, yeah, it's Does one it of have those, that crazy uh, the four cylinder, but it's like a nine six four motor. That's right, nine six four architecture. Yeah, but um, I've got one of the cars, uh, one of the first two hundred and five horsepower versions of this engine. This is his That's own so bespoke much engine. power for one of these things. Yeah, now he's he's got 240 and fuel oh injected. Oh my god! Woo. But mine has Weber's, and um, yeah, mine's real analog old school, which I really like. It's very very cool. Great looking car. What's co- what color is that? If I tell you, I have to kill you. <laughs> um, it it's based on graphite metallic, which uh-huh. is a 50s Porsche color, but it's not. Uh, it, it has some. It has some secrets to it. In fact, Rob uh, Rod told me tells me that at least two two or three times a week he gets a call. Hey, what's that color code? And he won't tell anybody. I mean, this, it has way more depth than any it's factory flex, silver. It's got flecks of bronze and black in it um, to kind of pick up that the color of the interior. And it's yeah. a very unique color. People love it. It's a really. It works really well with that car, and the yellow fog lights really offset yeah, it nicely. Yeah, and. Yeah. What a great car. How long did it take him to build that thing for you? He was finished in a little over two years. I caught him at a really good time. He wasn't as hot as he is now. Yeah. And uh, But then, you know, it went back for some changes. I had some, I had Lexan windows put in it um, the, with louvers. Um, you know on when the you, sides there? On the, on the quarter. On the, the rear, rear quarters, quarters yeah, because, yeah. You know when you roll a window down on a car and you get that whoop, 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 Oh, whoop. yeah. I well, hate that. I, I was getting that inside, inside the, that car. And so... I had him pop out those rear quarters, and he put Lexan with vents, right? With with louvers. Cool. Yeah. Did that solve it? Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's still a little bit, but way better. One of the other things you might be able to do is get just get a little bit of something that goes on the mirror that kind of like just bends the air well, like a little bit. Sometimes I'll bring the window up. The the the, the front windows are Lexan as well, and they're on straps oh. like an old GT, <laughs> like a GT. So I pull it up about this far, and I let the window go up about two or three inches, and that cuts it a little. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. That's that buffeting in, especially in new cars. Like this thing, it's like this is a one of one. So yeah, like, yeah. how do you? How is Rod going to know that that was going to happen? Yeah. But like, and he's and and God bless the man for for f- trying to figure out a way around oh, it. Yeah, yeah. But in a new car, it drives it's me horrible. batshit. No, no, I know. The nine nine one Porsches did it. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. they they would sell someone like three D printed it or something. This little thing. It was just a little tiny fin that you just would put on the inside of the mirror, okay. and it completely just fixed broke it. Up the, the, just the broke the enough. air up just yeah. enough. Mm. Um, I had a Chevy Volt that I drove around for a couple <laughs> of years. Fantastic car, and but it did that because it was so aerodynamically right. slippery with right. the windows closed. And someone had the same thing. They they put this thing on, and the dealer went like nuts when I brought the car <laughs> what are you doing you're gonna you're gonna mess up the efficiency of the car I'm like dude I don't yeah. give a shit I care about being able to drive with the windows right, down right. yeah that's lovely so is this your is this like the pinnacle of your automotive uh, uh, street cardom 
Well, you know, I yes, it is. Um, I I, um, I ordered this car because I knew I was turning seventy, and I'm I was born the same year as the three fifty six oh, nineteen forty eight, and I thought, what a cool way to kind of combine my passion for cars and my birthday, and it just seemed to work. Yeah. And so I talked, I told Rod about it, and uh, yeah, we built it for my birthday, basically. It's it's such a cool car. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I read that your first car was like this terrible Renault Dauphine. Yeah, Renault Dauphine with yeah. the city horn and the country horn. <laughs> the beep, the beep, dual boop, horns. Boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. Yeah, yeah. They had, you know, the, uh, there's uh, some of the electric cars have that, too. They have the, uh, you know, because you, you can't oh, the hear sound. them. The, yeah, they need a but, sound, right? But they ha- they'll also have a two-level a two level horn where there's a, there's a uh, uh, you know, the get-out-of-my-way horn. Yep. But then there's like a sort of a chirpy, like a friendly horn for pedestrians. It's like a pedestrian horn. That Volt Bicycles had it. And, really? Yeah, the Volt head on the steering wheel was, yeah. uh, uh, and then the end of the stalk was this sort oh. of almost cat-like trill, like, durr, durr, durr. and it was like a polite way of saying there's uh, a very quiet car here. Yeah, no, I understand. It has to. Have, they have to have a sound of some sort. All I hear is tires. Yeah. You know, whenever they go by. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why? What was we? Was the country horn or the, louder or the or the I city horn? It was, was a, it was a little plastic switch on the on the steering column right behind the steering like wheel. Like grass or building, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. yeah. What is that? What I mean, not the horn, but like what was your uh, what got you this I, into cars? W- what really got me into sports cars was when I was in a- eighth grade, I believe. Um, there was an exchange student that came from England, mm-hmm. and his father had a Mini Cooper S. Oh yeah, and um, he let me drive it. And I loved it. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. We used to, you know, we used to peel rubber in the parking lot and the front wheels, you yeah. know, and and it was just this. And I had another friend who had a TR3, and we we drove together. And I always loved driving. He would let me drive it. And so little by little, uh, it, you know, that, that I kind of caught the bug. Um, they bring these things over, right hand drive stuff. Well, the 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 uh, the, uh, the mini was right hand yeah. drive. The TR3 was a regular. American version. Yeah. But there was there was a lot of motorsports in Pennsylvania. I grew up in a little town outside of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I ever went to saw, Temple, right? Yeah, I went to yeah. Temple University. Yeah. Uh, I went to, um, but there was the Giants to Spare Hill Climb in the Poconos. There was the Redding Road Races. I remember that. Which were Redding actually road races. on the yeah. road, on the street. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I went to the Saturday Night Midgets uh, and stuff at Hatfield Speedway. Uh-huh. And saw, you know, a good friend of mine's father ran the hot dog concession at the track. So we'd go on Saturday night and go under the fence, you know, and the light under the lights with the dust and everything. And so I just, you know, had it in my blood. And as soon as I got um, in the late 70s, you know, when I was starting to make a little money and had a little time, I uh, got a go kart and started. Oh, with a go kart. I started. That's interesting. And then I, as an adult. Well, yeah. Well, I wasn't much of an adult. I was. I mean, but but you weren't. It's like you were eight. No, like, correct. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I was sure. I was in my twenties. And uh, what can, what compelled you to start with a go kart at that age? Well, I was I was living in New York City and going out to the beach in, in the Hamptons, and uh, one day I was going by um, on a road in, in near Bridgehampton, and it said go kart races, and I went really. So I pulled in, looked, and there's all these guys scooting around, and they had a go-kart club, a really active go-kart club, and I literally said, hey, how do you do this? He goes, you buy a cart and come on out, kind of thing, and I that's what I did. I can't imagine that track still exists. No. Yeah. They, in Someone's fact, the Bridgehampton racetrack was yeah. there. That's all. That's a housing Oh, was it at the Bridgehampton racetrack? It was adjacent to it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And so I, I was, got a, I'm, one of the, uh, One of my, the unfortunate things about being young in this country is I never got to drive at Bridgehampton. Anyone who yeah. ever did it said how great it was. Well, I won at Bridgehampton. Did you? There won, you go. I yeah. won a national in, in a Formula Ford. There you go. Yeah. Only was it as awesome as everybody says it is? It was amazing. Up, lots of uphill and downhill. Um, the only reason I won is because one of my best friends uh, broke. <laughs> he hey, was a, he was real, listen, doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Yeah, this guy, Drake Olson, who went on to become a pro driver, he, um, yeah, he, he broke and uh, I ended up winning it. So that, that was my only real national win. So Is that where you went after go-karts to Formula? Formula, Formula Ford and then on to Sports 2000. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I raced the Pro Sports 2000 series for two years. The SCCA. And then IMSA, right? I did a little IMSA yeah. racing, and um, I did some Porsche. I, I raced at Daytona in the finale, um, and I raced at um, Lime Rock. And then I had an accident uh, at, at Road America with a, in, a, in the Pontiac Fiero that was a Joe Huffaker Oh, my God. Car. Yeah. Bob Earl and I were co-drivers, <laughs> and um, Bob is a great driver. And he put it on the pole. Fiero make a good race car? Uh, yeah, well, they were trying to promote the Fiero at the time. and they, that, well, it, Oh, this thing. Oh, uh, yep. It, was that was, uh, was uh, it the, was the, blue, uh, the was first the blue, gen and the second gen, the top one there, right? The blue well, and white? that was a Holbert car. That was someone else's car. That wasn't the one I drove. 
Ours was blue and yellow, I think. Um, but that's but that it was that second that, that, generation yes, car. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's and, a pretty uh, good looking race car. Oh, it was honest. it was it's a, not bad. It was really quick in the hands of Bob Earl. He won a bunch of races with it. He put it on the pole at Elkhart Lake, and then it was a it was a uh, endurance race. I was going to drive first. He was going to drive second. And unfortunately, he never got a chance to drive second because the transmission locked up in in the kink. Yikes! Uh, you know the kink in yeah. the back back side of yeah. Yeah, with like 150 miles an hour. Yeah, it was, well, least. not quite in that car, but it was fast. And yeah. and I um, I woke up in the ambulance Ooh. on the way to the hospital. Uh, I was out for quite a while. Really? And that was when I decided maybe my future was in strumming my uh, guitar <laughs> instead of wow. uh, racing. <laughs> Well, I was racing. But, I was pro racing and not giving it a pro effort. I, I wasn't. I wasn't testing. Yeah. I would show you up. You just at, show up at the race I'd weekend. I'd be in the recording studio all week. <laughs> Friday night, I'd get a flight to Wisconsin. You know, Milwaukee. I'd drive, get a rent a car, drive out to the track, qualify on Saturday, race on Sunday. It, it wasn't. You know, it was it was. But you were still putting out decent decent numbers even without putting in the effort. Yeah. Huh? You must yeah, have it was okay. Good but, amount of talent. There. I did all right. I did yeah. all right. Um, I always love driving. I, to this day, man, I'm just a. I, there's nothing better for me than I live in Tennessee now. Great. Have you ever driven to Tennessee? It's phenomenal. Zach the, was just driving like last week. La, literally last like weekend. Some of the best, yeah. best country roads, roads so, oh, yeah. ever. And they're well paved. There's yeah. not a lot of people. Yep. And during COVID, there was nobody. Yeah. I would go out six o'clock in the morning, and I take my Emory car, and I've I've also got an MGA twin cam. Which oh, cool! Is, which fun, is yeah. really cool. They make great sounds. Yeah, a great sound. The real, real and old. and it's you're not going so fast that you can't really oh. kind of have fun, you know. Um, and I I'd go out and I've got a series of roads south of Nashville in, in the Franklin area, Leapers mm-hmm. Fork, just that are so beautiful that um, um, Dario Franchitti used to live out there. He calls it the Leapers Leapers Rink. He's just got uh, he's got a nice little singer coming. I saw his. Does he? I follow him on Instagram. He's, oh, yeah. I think he's been waiting for it a while. He called it Dad Spec because it's got back seats. <laughs> Dad Spec. But yeah, yeah, he seems fun. That guy. Yeah. That's I mean, you know Tennessee roads are amazing. I yeah. mean, really amazing. They really have, the tail of the dragon is the very well known one, but it's actually the other ones in that yeah, area yeah, that are even better. Place. Yeah, the tail of the dragon is down in that southeast corner mm-hmm. near near North Carolina, um, but this is up near Nashville where I live, and uh, it's. It's just great. Yeah, it's something I didn't know about when I moved to Nashville. You know, I went there for the music, obviously. And, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I started all these. This car culture there is amazing. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great guys who have great collections and really, uh, really fun. A lot of great cars and coffee things going on. Yeah. So I, I kind of discovered the roads, and I said, "Oh, this is the place I want to be." You know. Do you have any desire to, to compete at all anymore? Nah, not no. anymore. I, bu- I bought a Sports 2000 car um, a few years back. Uh, I thought that it was the car that I raced in the 80s. Mm-hmm. It turned out to be a car I raced against, <laughs> but it wasn't the exact car I raced. And um, Oh, you're going to find it, aren't Maybe, you? Maybe, I'll try. <laughs> well, I, I donated it to, um, I, I, I put it up for auction at Amelia a couple years ago. Uh, is for, it like one of this? So it's so, sort of this open cockpit? That is my actually me in the gray car right, right there. Right there? That, well, that, With that, the three stripes? It didn't have three stripes when I oh. had it. I mean, that's, Someone a, must that's have a pretty neat looking little car. Sort yeah, of a that's Can-Am a, that's kind a, of vibe. That's a Tiga. The, with yeah. some uh, spats over the uh, yep. back wheels for yep. aero. Well, you know, it had it had a 2000 cc Ford engine, but because of the aero and the bodywork, it was much faster than the Formula Ford. Yeah. But you had the security of having the bodywork. Yeah, so, open wheel cars sketch me out. Yeah, yeah, I felt more comfortable in this. Yeah. Uh, but a great series. In fact, the Walter Mitty that's happening in Atlanta in a couple of weeks uh-huh. is featuring sp- uh, vintage Sports 2000 races. Oh, cool. They're great. If you ever get is a chance still, to drive is one. Is there still an opportunity to race those? Yes. Is there still in racing vintage. Those? Yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of In like Vera races. or oh, one of those. Fun. Yeah, uh, all of them have. They have uh, Sports 2000. They're really good good cars. They're, that's a that's a real cool looking yeah, cool looking is. little car. Yeah. It is really great. And yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna go race, I mean, get yeah. do it in a race car. Don't do it yeah, in a car. So I, I love doing that. And anyway, I bought this car, and my, my wife got mad at me. I tested it a couple times down in Florida and drove it on the track and uh-huh. had a lot of fun. She goes, "You're not gonna race this, Santa, right?" <laughs> and so we ended up we ended up donating to us with spinal bifida and um, at, at Amelia. And oh, that's nice. It was nice, you know, raised a lot of money for that. What they get for it? Uh, almost fifty grand. Oh, cool! Yeah, and, for something like that, that's, Kevin, a, that's Kevin, a good number. Kevin Jeanette restored it. Oh, really? It was in good shape when I it was decent shape when I bought it, but he really went through it nuts to bolts. And then he did one of his special Kevin Jeanette uh, paint jobs that it, it, very unique. Uh, he put quotes from famous rock rock and roll people all over the oh cool all over the car, and he it was red, white, and blue, and yeah, it was really it was really nice. Fun. Yeah. 
That's cool. I mean, I, I what about like uh, like Goodwood or something like that? I well, I was I was uh, I was at Goodwood t- three years right the year before COVID. With the it, Festival of Speed nineteen no or um, the. the the historic revival. Revival. Yeah. Yeah. Revival. Yeah. You dress period. Oh, no. No. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I went to the festival of speed. The hill climb one. The hill climb. Yes, yeah. By the house. That's yeah. on my that's on my short list. To it's go do it's, that uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. More than pretty incredible. Very incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Nick Sorch from uh, the uh, uh, R train. Yes. You know, obviously. I know, Nick. Yeah. yeah. They just took a group there. That's awesome. Uh, right after we did the, the antique race. Oh, did you do it? Was this, oh, did you do it before? Or we, they just went this year? They went. Oh, they yeah, le- Donald is there like now. They, they left the day after yeah, that Donald, antique thing. Donald's there right now. Whoa. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he was driving yeah. some like minis and stuff on the track and whatever. Yeah, they had a whole thing. I, I think Nick has kind of uh, aligned the odd train with not Goodwood shocked in some way yeah not shocked yeah so john was uh was was doing this uh veteran run thing uh that we were doing oh yeah although you uh <laughs> you had some mechanical issues above and beyond our mechanic we had our own mechanical yeah. issues but we made it <laughs> you made it I, so <laughs> what happened to your what were you driving in this thing i was driving a 1901 winton okay and now i am not familiar with the cars of the early early days right? i think this is the car we were supposed to be driving <laughs> then we got moved they to a t- different they, car <laughs> We need more people. We needed a uh, There it is. There it yeah, is right there. The Winton. They told me that um, they told me that it was very easy to drive and they gave me the whole rundown. And when I when I learned a little bit about it, I was really ama- blown away because as I said, I'm not that familiar with the early, early days of the yeah. of the automobile. This is this thing is old school. I mean it looks like it looks like a horse cart. But the guy who, who built it was a, a real engineering genius. He has it has a lot of locomotive technology. Um, there's no carburetor. <laughs> it's the fuel is injected with an air pump. Oh, interesting. With, and a piston. It's it's really really unique. And you see the two levers to the right of the yeah. steering wheel. So it's basically a constant velocity transmission, no clutch. Right. So the lever on the left, it has a neutral position. Mm-hmm. Push it forward. That's reverse. Yes. Pull it towards you, and that's first. Okay. Basically. So that's kind of. Let's go. Uh huh. So pull to go and then push to reverse. Right. Okay. So pull like to a go. Rally car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Push it. Push it into neutral. Then grab the second lever on the right. Yeah. Pull it back towards you, and that's drive. That's okay. kind of cruise. Okay. And eighteen miles an hour. Theoretically. Yeah. Yeah. So we left the that big mansion that we all took off from. Yeah. And you know we wound through the streets a bit, and then we headed out. And there, I, as you probably remember, there was a hill going down to the beach. Yes, it was one of the scariest moments of my life. Okay, <laughs> I'm <laughs> we, with you. We saw what did I we am see? Totally 20, with you. 20, 26. Twenty six. Twenty six. Terrifying. Oh, really? I, I thought we were gonna fucking die, dude. I, <laughs> I, I think I so think we were pushing twenty. It was so sketchy. <laughs> so we're we're heading down, and the car started to feel a little wobbly. Mm-hmm. And this guy came scooting up in a regular car. He must have been one of the fo- you know, following the, the thing. He goes, pull over, pull over. We had just gotten to the bottom of the hill on the on this flat part uh, along the beach. And we pulled over, and I looked back, and there was the axle oh sticking God. out about, well, the wheel. Here's the end of the, of the <laughs> body work. Something about that far. There was that much exposed axle. Oh, God, out. that's so bad. So the, there, there was a, a, a beveled gear that would fit in, that, that meshed with the... Um, the horizontal gear, which was basically a differential, and the bolt had snapped, and it just worked its way out. Oof. And couple, like another couple hundred yards, I've that got whole picture, thing would just I've got a probably, picture of it, you know, probably yeah, just yeah. come out completely. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, whoa. And, and if it would have come out on the hill, that wouldn't have It would have been so Not good. bad. Not good. Yeah, you'd have been, you'd so, been hurled into so the So when they realized they couldn't fix it, I hitched a ride, and that's when I saw you at lunch. And it by only the, took us two hours and forty-four minutes to get nineteen miles. To and lunch. by the way, I will—I I have to commend you. You—you uh, you had your period. Um, oh your yeah. Period, auto uh, garb down. I, <laughs> I was a <laughs> steampunk motorist. Is, you were was my cause, but yeah. I'm actually—I'm considering wearing that just like <laughs> out in Hollywood. The, yeah, that. I mean, I basically dr- was dressing like Donald. I mean, that's—that's that's just <laughs> what he wears. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, he's very, very. Donald's very sharp. He's very put together. I know. I got, uh, I'd love to see his closet. I bet. Oh, it's, yeah. I bet his closet is amazing. <laughs> I bet it's bigger than the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> That's huge. yeah. Oh yeah, he's got outfits. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. So, uh, would, are you going to go? Are you going to try it again next year? 
I'll see if I get invited. I don't know. Um, maybe. I thought uh, it was really fun. It was fun. They're, they're a great group of people. And yeah. They, the uh, the whole the whole thing he's got going up there in Newport, uh, Rhode Island, is the Audrain thing is is very very cool. And I love. I'm a, I'm a historian. I love you know. I'm I love reading history and. I love, obviously I love automotive history, but I love all sorts of history. And I just love the way they're preserving things and the way uh, they look at um, the collection and, uh, you know, what yeah. he's done. It's so. an interesting town for it, too, because as you it's go perfect. through Newport, it's like this building was built in 1640. Right. And oh, I know. This, this pub is where they, know. you know, ratified yeah. the Declaration of Independence <laughs> right. or whatever it was. For, you sure. know, those signs yeah. are all over the place. Yeah. And living out here in L.A., you don't see... If something was built in the 30s, it's old. But you grew up in Connecticut, so yeah, you, yeah, you know the thing. old school stuff. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly New like England that thing. too. Yeah. But when I went to the Audrain, I was, you know, they they told me that the Audrain, the building that the Audrain Museum is in, was actually the Vanderbilt's department store. Oh, how interesting! They, when they came up from New York for the mm. summer, they there was no. You couldn't buy clothes. You don't walk into a store and buy clothes. Is that where their money came from? Was it department stores? No, well, no, I don't no, even no. Know that. No, it was railroads. Railroads, and, and right? Yeah, stuff. okay. But so they would, you know, obviously they had social events and balls and you know on the lawn, whatever they were doing. So they literally brought their designers, their dressmakers and their suit makers, up with them for the summer oh. and had built a department store where they could make their clothes oh i did not realize so that the women could have a new dress for every week or every day or makes sense i guess yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful building <laughs> I mean, so that's wow that, yeah right? yeah wow exactly right yeah well you know it was the days before income tax so right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> not that that would well, bother if, them once that you much see the right? houses so you go oh, I mean, well how about the house that we took off from the ochre ochre courthouse did you is, go in inside and look yeah, at the it's ceiling insane. <laughs> sistine chapel. I thought, yeah that's what i thought too it's, it, in looked, rooms. it looked like a sistine it's chapel. ridiculous yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there was a, there was a the, the, this this American wealthy um, group of people who were the industrialists and you know Standard Oil and the trains and this and that. Yeah, it's not. I don't idolize those people. Because, no, I don't idolize <laughs> but, them but either. The, but, but the things it, that they built. It's were a period pretty, of history that is just yeah. really unbelievable. Zach uh, was looking up some stuff about that house and uh, and even adjusted for basic inflation, it was like two two hundred million. Is yeah. the <laughs> relative the relative cost? Well, it was of that interesting. Home. They, they built it based on like uh, chateaus they'd seen in France. Of course. And then it said <laughs> that it was their house that they would vacation at for eight weeks. Right. So this narrow, I mean, pretty narrow eight amount of time. Eight weeks of the whole year. Eight yeah. weeks of the whole year. And they year. bring an entire staff. Yeah. Right. And, and they build like, a department store. Build a department store. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Lay the road in front of the car as they drove almost. Well, they, 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 um, one of the Vanderbilt daughters was the first woman to ever drive a car in America. That makes sense. And her deal was that she would drive up and down Main Street so people could look at her. So she needed a new dress every time she drove. Oh, yes. You can't have the same dress twice. That's faux pas when you're, Excuse me. When you're breaking barriers, like driving <laughs> like cars up and down. It's like wearing brand new sneakers every day, stuff they, like that. They, uh, they own a Vanderbilt car. Did you, did you see that one they have? Yeah, they have yeah. the, the 1910, yep. I think, Renault. I think it was car. the one that won the Vanderbilt Cup. Yeah, yeah. The Vanderbilt Cups, yeah. yeah. It's, mm-hmm. pretty, it's a pretty cool little car. Which, which I think they, also I learned that the Vanderbilt Cup race was originally in Newport. Then it moved to Long Island. Oh, I didn't realize. It was and it was Island. later raced in Long Island. I, I have a I have a painting of a Vanderbilt Cup race. Early American Island. racing is a really interesting topic, especially like you know in Los Angeles, like we had so much of it here. Yeah, sure. Did you ever read about the Santa Monica Grand Prix? Oh yeah. The yeah. Santa Monica. It was like up up Wilshire, <laughs> and then like around yeah. San Vicente, and they had the crazy curve with the cliff next to it, and it was like an yeah. eight and a half mile street circuit with a four. Four miles straight away, <laughs> like four miles. Straight yeah, away. I mean, Southern California is the birth as where the, the sports car racing started in America. Yeah, I mean, Torrey Pines and all these places. Um, the uh, the Paramount Ranch track. That's there's right. still little uh, little bits of it there. Yeah, you never actually saw that as a racetrack, did no, you? It was, I never it was did. a studio by then. But yeah. like that was the first place. It's just really funky. It's it's literally. Um, where the set of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman was, and they shot some Western shit up there, too. Right. It's up in Malibu, and uh, it's owned by Paramount, hence Paramount Ranch. But there was an actual yeah. road course I'd there, and it was the first place that Carol Shell 
be ever raced. And there is some, you can hike it now, um, and there are some remnants of, of, track. of track, yeah, which is kind of neat. There's it's like a it's actually like a figure eight, and it crosses, there's a bridge across, it's the most dangerous feature. It's like big sweeper, like under bridge with concrete on both oh, sides. Oh, you mean of the it. track went over a bridge over yeah, the other over part of the track. and then under, yeah, under itself. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty wild because there, there it is. Yeah, see, it's like it's got like a oh, a yeah, loop. I see the oh, crossover. there's a photo with the with the crossover. Um, oh, there's the bridge. Yeah, wow. it's like a slot car track. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's really crazy. It does look like a slot it car track. It looks like track. a slot car track, right? I think that there's the bridge in the center. Look at how sketchy that bridge is. Amazing. D Jaguar. Yeah, I mean, that's like the real deal. Yeah, and Shelby was in uh, I don't know a Cooper or something or you know something really old, but you can you can go walk it still, and it's uh, there was a where uh, where exactly is it? I mean, it's on, right off of Mulholland Highway and Cornell. Okay, so uh, so uh, north of the four hundred five. Yeah, it's off the one hundred one. It's west. Oh, okay. So if you go. 405, this is very L.A., folks, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 405 to the 101, and you get off in Mulholland right. or at Canaan, mm -hmm. and you come south on Canaan and turn left on Cornell, and then it's right there. Yeah, I'm not that familiar with the area, but I'll, it's I'll take a ride out there. It's a beautiful place to go take a drive in your, yeah, in your rented 911. <laughs> I'll I take, definitely I'll recommend take a ride two-mile road there. course. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Front straight, half a mile long. So the bridge is still there, and then that sort of uh, bottom on the bottom left corner, that thing that looks like a dick hanging down, that, that's, that's <laughs> still there as well. And then the rest of it is like a like a dirt path. And then, oh yeah, see it says Cornell Road, right, right there on the okay. side of the map. There, yeah. I'll, I'll GPS that and take a it's ride. Quite, out yeah, it's neat. It's a neat little hike if you wanted yeah, to go yeah. for a hike. Yeah. And, and then if you if you got rid of the tarmac, that's what it looks like today up there. Very huh. interesting. Wow. Old school. And we had like, there was a Beverly nice. Hills Speedway. Really? Yeah. We had board. There's a Beverly Hills board track. A board track. Yeah. They were all over the place. Yeah. And there was like 40, 50 racetracks in L.A. There it is. The Beverly Hills Speedway. Holy crap. Isn't that crazy? I, no, that I didn't Not know. Not small. I, yeah. The uh, first super speedway. Big. It's big. Look at the banking. <laughs> Look how steep the banking is like Daytona. So, so that's in the uh, in the early early 1900s. Yeah, yeah. It's like in the 20s. Amazing. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We had these tracks all over yeah. Los is, Angeles. It's at the corner of Beverly and Wilshire. Yeah. That's where it was. <laughs> yeah, wow. Right, right. No way. Yeah. That's, I mean, are, you, are you being serious? No, I mean, no, based no, on really this picture, is. that's all Look, I know. See, you oh, can see the is. sign, Beverly Drive and Wilshire Boulevard. Amazing. Yeah. Now that's blows Dude, my mind. LA, you can't, you can't have racing in America without LA. No, and for true. people who don't live here, like that's like, pick your most expensive real estate <laughs> in whatever city you live in and pick the two biggest cross streets and yeah. then just go, it's this is a racetrack. It's like, right. if you're in New York City, it's like a 57th in Madison <laughs> right. or something yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Pull up that picture you're hovering on, Zach, because you can see the banking there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that banking. I know. That's like Day that's Daytona. It's literally like Daytona level banking. That's so awesome. And it's made of wood. Look at, this, look at the side. It's just wood. It's so crazy. Wow. Yeah. That so you can, weird. there's a, there's a documentary, um, and I can't, 1919, there it is. I can't, uh, I can't remember the name of the documentary, but they just got this, this very dry person just drives around LA and <laughs> sort of re overlays all the, all the old racetracks. Yeah. Is there, is there more? The Roaring Road? Oh, that's a, that's a, a movie. Oh, is it? Oh. Dude, this thing, high banked timber board track. Mm -hmm. These guys were nuts. Yeah. I love it. That what's your amazing. favorite what's your favorite track? Uh you mean that I that I got a chance to drive mm -hmm. on or probably probably Elkhart Lake, even though I never did very well there. And I didn't like Mid Ohio very much, but I actually did pretty well there. Um, Mid Ohio's a tough track. Yeah. 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 Uh, I I I always liked Elkhart Lake. Bridgehampton was incredible. But you know, I only raced on it once. Um, but um, I raced at Lime Rock. I raced all over the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And you know, you so race against Paul Newman. No, no, he was he was the, he was. Um, I was basically kind of still in Formula Ford and that kind of thing when he was you know really cranking it. What, 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 what year were you, you in Formula Ford? Let's see. So I started in go karts in '78. I did. I think I did two summers in go karts, and then probably started in Ford in '80. I only did one year in Formula Ford, and I moved to the Sports 2000. Probably '82, '83, '84. And was Formula Ford, if I read this correctly, that's where you got your UK license for racing? I did. I, I no. I, I did my first racing school in the UK. I was oh. I was friends with a guy named Richard Lloyd, who ran a company called GTI Engineering. He raced um, in the 
British Saloon Car Championship mm-hmm. in you know golf GTIs, and then he moved into Audis and became well, he did Porsches, all sorts of things. Uh, and he was a friend of mine. He he was in the music business, but he was a professional racer. And he and I uh, got together and we became friends. And uh, I did the Brands Hatch School at uh, Brands Hatch Racetrack. Oh. And I I've had, never done. I've driven it virtually. I've never driven in real life. Is it is it nice? I did the club circuit. It which seems is, like an in, like a it's British a lime rock. Yeah, yeah. it is kind of like that. Um, Paddock Bend, which is the the first turn, which is, comes off the straightaway mm-hmm. and it dips down to the right. Um, it's really cool. It's I mean it's so it's so classic British, you know. And um, I I got uh, you know I kind of got qualified, I guess you'd say, but I still had to pass the SCCA stuff. So I came back, and then I did a, I did a race school at Pocono at Bertel Roos, and um, Michael and John Andretti had been there the year before me, and I raced the same car that Michael raced, oh. the same Ford. Oh. Um, and then that's when I got my SCCA license, because I had to do an American school to get that. Pocono's not a bad track, actually. It's kind of I did the road course there. Yeah. I had the banking, though. Yeah, yeah. They used the Came one corner the of the banking and, and go back in, down. Yeah. When I, Have you raced there? Yeah, growing up on the East Coast, yeah. it was like Lime Rock, Pocono, yeah, and, yeah. and then you know Monticello once they built that. Right. If, you have, if you've tried I Monticello been, I haven't been there yet. Yeah, it's good. It's nice? Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's very uh, VIR-like. Right. Um, I haven't and, been to VIR either. Oh, and, really? And I know that's a really oh, cool Oh, it's track. amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. And Road America is still the best. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, as far as like private clubs go, Monticello is definitely right. the best one. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Did you did you stop driving racetracks after the, your crash? Yep. Yeah, I did not. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I start, you know, I still go out and go karts uh, with go kart. I don't race the go karts, but I go out with some friends and we kind of race, but we don't really, you know. But I love, I love karts, man. Karts are the best. They are. I yeah. mean, as far Except as adrenaline versus, you know, more cost bang for your and, buck. Yeah. And, but as I've gotten older, man, I can't take it. I come in my it ribs, beats you up. Ki- my ki- killing me, my neck. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. But you know, I like the, um, I like the the Rotax. Um, you know, the the ones the the. You know, not the shifter cart. Yeah, yeah. I've driven shifter carts. It's too much. Yeah, it's almost too much stuff happening. All you know, very quickly. Yeah. Plus, if uh, you if you got out of sports cars because you felt they were dangerous, and then you get into a shifter <laughs> cart. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't tell my wife. But um, how but, did the uh, how did like the the booking agents and the management team feel about your racing? You know, it's kind of weird. I, now that I think about it, I can't believe that they didn't try to stop me. <laughs> it's weird. It was the eighties. You know, people just didn't care yeah. as much about stuff. Maybe they were just happy you and weren't like fucking Vince <laughs> kneeling it into up, up Sunset Boulevard. Or maybe or they maybe they were hoping I would like stuff it. They might have had a giant insurance policy. Oh, me for oh all yikes. I know. So, uh, <laughs> knowing the kind of folks I was dealing with, you never know. Yeah. What's on the, uh, is there, I mean, now that you've got this Emery thing, I mean, that's 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 a creme de la creme of vintage Porsches. What mm-hmm. else, anything else on the list? Well, Kevin Jeanette, uh, you know Kevin, I'm sure, right? Down Not personally, yeah. but I know the name. Well, yeah. he's an incredibly creative guy, um, much more uh, skewed toward the racing side. Mm-hmm. And, uh you know, he had, he raced. He had Paul Newman. He ran Paul Newman. He uh, he, ra- he had um, Steve McQueen at certain points, and so he built me a nine fourteen six. Oh, cool! Basically, a track car. It's it's legal for the street, but it's really more of a track car, mm-hmm. and it's pretty pretty uh, awesome. Um, but I'm I'm feeling like it's, you know, I think I need to move on from that. Um, I don't know if there's a picture of it. Why just too gnarly? You think it kind of it's kind of similar to the the the, the nine fourteen six that orange that one. Orange one that but might it, be Zwart's car. It uh, looks that looks a lot. That's like a it. real nine fourteen six GT the, from the factory, um, and he Kevin used that as a, as a, as a jumping off point. Um, There's a couple guys out here that have some really big power 914s, and they are you can build them. They're Mm -hmm. insane. I mean, any 911 engine will fit. So there's there's a guy with a like a 350 horsepower 3.4 in one of these things. It's very shady. Well, this is the one. The one that Kevin built for me is a is a numbers matching 914.6. He built it up to a 2.4, so it has about 240 horse. That's a bunch. It's good. Yeah. yeah, it's really really good. When it's a six, does that have the better gearbox than the fours? The, the four cylinder one has like the worst gearbox. In it's a, a nine fifteen transmission. It's the oh, same yeah. dog leg five speed. Yeah, it is what it is. You yeah, know. they're not vague great. third. They're, they're not great. They're not great. <laughs> I'm, a, so, I'm a big G fifty yeah. fan. And and I've got I've got my um I've got my MG twin cam Roadster, which is a beautiful car, and my wife likes it because we put the top down, we cruise, we don't go too fast. And, yeah. You know, it's a, it's great. It's and it makes you feel it's like a time capsule. Yeah, 
it makes you feel like you're back in time, you know, and it's something about it. Have you, you driven any of the crazy modern stuff, even to just have a little taste? Yeah, I've driven, you know, I've driven some GT, GT3 RS and stuff like that, and you know, I'm not a, I'm not a fan. Too fast? Yeah, it's it's, it's too 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 disassociated from mm -hmm. my kind of my philosophy of of driving. I like heel and toe. Sure. I like standard transmissions. Uh, I don't like ABS on a race car. I don't. I don't want to. It's like point and shoot. You know, you know. You go into the corner and you just nail it, and then you nail it, and then you nail it. Yeah. And it's it's you know it, it's a thing. And uh, I I've done it and I've tried it and I just don't. I I want a car that moves around. Sure. I, I got a chance to drive um, the um, the Porsche Abarth um, that won uh, Le Mans. Graham Hill was driving it. Uh, from the Revs Institute, uh -huh. they were at the track, and yeah, they they've me, got some pretty cool. They stuff. let me drive that car. Yeah, that was an unbelievable experience because it had the narrow radio, you know, not radial, you know, just bias sliding black tires, all over the place, and it just moved. It just moved around, and it was just there. It that is. That thing, yeah. Oh. Amarth Carrera GTL. It was a, an incredible. Uh, I think experience Seinfeld's to got one of these too. Yeah. yeah, 135 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. And it didn't matter. It just it just felt so cool. And, yeah. and of course, so it was so so expensive. I was very very careful. <laughs> needless to say, once it yeah, started, it's got to be deep in the seven figures, right? Yeah, at least deep. Once once it started drifting, I yeah. said, oh, well, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, this is good. I, I felt it. I yeah. did it. And we're okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna bring it back in one piece. Here, yeah. So yeah. You ever tried drift school? No, I never. You should have. try drift school. Yeah. That's see now that's that's oh, yeah. pretty analog stuff. Yeah. You Send want a the car, car that moves around. You want a car <laughs> yeah. that moves around. I don't no. know if I want it to move quite that much. No, but, you, you do. Know. Really? You should, yeah, You've you should done try it. it. Yeah, yeah. we've both done it. It's super fun. Yeah. yeah. Up, that's at, great. up at Willow that's Springs. Great. They've right. probably got one in Nashville area. Or rally too. school. I mean that also Rally you know, years ago I always wanted to try a rally a rally thing. You can. The schools like like yeah. dirt, we are dirt the fish. That will bring yeah, you I gotta back. watch you guys. <laughs> dirt fish you guys and rally are ready. Yeah, we're expensive <laughs> friends to have. Um, dirt fish and rally ready. You know they they have great uh, instructors and they have you know courses laid out where you're not going to crash into a tree or anything. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, where do they do that at? Dirt fish is outside of Seattle. Okay. Rally ready is outside of Austin. Oh. And there's Team O'Neill in Vermont also. So they have courses where it's a, you know you can you can push it a little bit but oh, you're yeah. not going to hit a tree yeah. or something totally. yeah. yeah and then once you get you know good they have they have trails at they actual you, stages as well right yeah they have both but that's if you, want, if you want want to do that you yeah. know you don't have to like the first the two-day school at rally ready they're not going to put you on the stage rally because right. they don't want people to get exuberant so, <laughs> if it, so if everything is like it's like a really big autocross made of dirt there's plenty of room for the car to slide and you gotcha. can really feel weight transfer, you yeah. know, front grip, front slide. Like you can just really feel all the dynamics that I think kind of connects to older cars. Mm -hmm. um, Does it have speeds. like the rear braking yeah. levers so you can, you know, get yes. it to rotate and mm -hmm. Definitely. But they teach you how to, you can get pretty far without it. They really, it's really about, you know, weight transfer, yeah, which yeah. from racing all these kinds of cars, sure. I'm sure you're familiar with, yeah, but yeah. it's it's accentuated in the dirt. And I always tell people, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna pick one racing school, just go to straight to rally because it'll apply everything applies to anything else and you can really get some rotation going on without a without a handbrake yeah, it's yeah. not necessary right. but the cars have it yeah yeah it's more fun when it's there for sure well i got a toy toyota tacoma in colorado i go, go on the, the i can go on a dirt road you know there in you the go. snow so yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of get, uh, get is, it, is it like three hundred thousand mile lifetime uh, t tacoma no, is a new absolutely a new brand new okay i just know if you had the, <laughs> it's brand new if you had like a if like an old friend if it wasn't for my son um it would have about um a thousand miles on it okay but uh, he tends to take it and do stuff with it oh, that's what they're for yeah they last a thousand years yeah that's cool man are you are you a collector of things not really. Guitars, um, maybe? Well, I have a lot of guitars, but I call them working guitars. Mm -hmm. I, I, if I don't play it, I pretty much don't keep it. Really? No, I, I know guys who have, I mean, you know, Vince Gill has a guitar collection that is just absolutely stunning. And, you know, I go over to his house and he'll he'll pull it. He has, <laughs> he has the custom-made cabinets. I mean, shouldn't, maybe I, he doesn't want people to know this, but he does. Uh, and he pulls <laughs> I think out, people could forgive Vince Gill yeah. for his custom guitar oh, he, cabinets. Well, he's, okay. the, he's the best. He pulls out a cabinet and he's got, you know, two, tele, two Stratocasters sitting there like this. And they're the exact ones that you would want if mm -hmm. you could 
pick the perfect Stratocaster. Yeah. And he's got two. Are they like, is it like a stack of drawers where you pull yeah, out the drawers? They're and drawers they're like, and they're laying like this. Oh, see, cool. now that is cool. Yeah. That's really uh, neat. And, I'd, and, I'd love to have a wall of drawers And like he's that got a guitars. wall of that. That's you know? so cool. Yeah, he, he's got a great, <laughs> he's got a wonderful collection. That rules. So, yeah. What are you? What is your guitar of choice? Well, I I have a '58 Strat that I bought from a drug dealer in New York in, in 1973. Nice. I bought it for 150 bucks. Oh wow! And I good mo- investment. Yeah, and I modified it over the years. Um, and it's the guitar I still play today. I play it. Wow. If you see me playing a Hall Note show, you're going to see me really? playing that guitar. Okay. And it's it's awesome. Usually it, that transaction goes the other way. Where you're trying to <laughs> get drugs and you have to find. Well, luckily stuff, for yeah. me, luckily for me, I, I never I never had the weakness. That's I had great. another a lot of other weaknesses. But not that one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it feels like it's part of my body. Uh-huh. Honestly, is some I just been playing it for so live long. and studio. Use for Any, both. I don't care where I. It, it's if I have to grab a guitar. If, if there's a fire, I'm grabbing the guitar. Uh, mine is that. There it is. Was uh, you had it on the bottom there. There it is on the, in the middle, right? In the oh, middle. it's got a really nice uh, kind of natural finish. Not a sunburst. It's it's completely natural. Oh, um, wow. Now that, well, it's a long story, but that is when. I had it. Um, I had had the Fender Shop put it back to its original three uh-huh. pickup configuration. But if you look over on the left, oh, they got two pickups. Uh, it's, there it's now, two. Or? They're two Gibson humbuckers, and that's the way I oh, bought it. Oh, cool! And that's really the the. There it is. That's oh, with yeah, the two yeah. humbuckers. Yeah. Very pretty guitar. Yeah. And um, I don't see that finish a lot on a '58. Yeah, Usually, you see the black or the sunburst. That's yeah, it's just a natural. Wood very finish. nice. Yep, nice yep. piece. It's a great, great guitar. Yeah. But I've got a bunch of other amazing acoustic guitars that I've had made custom guitars. Yeah, um, Fender. I mean, not Fender. Uh, Gibson up in Bozeman has a custom shop. I've got a few of those, and uh, the Martin Factory in Nazareth. Yeah, I've been to the Martin Factory. It's awesome. Yeah, Guitar Factory is. It's like I, I like car. Do you play? Fa- Do you play guitar? Awfully, but okay. but 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 a little you know, bit, yeah. and I and then but for a time, it, I, yeah. I appreciate it, and I collected guitars for like a little while right. um, when I thought I was going to be good, and then it turns out I wasn't, yeah, and right. so well. now I just kept two. But um, but go, yeah. guitar factories, watch factories, and car factories, there you like go. I love there. It's the same type of experience to to yeah. visit them. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to the Morgan Factory in England? No. If you're if you ever have in England and need a well, day that's, trip, that's hardcore you British, right? It there. is hardcore British, but yeah. it's like it's like a guitar factory because they're carving fucking wood up yeah, there. Yeah, really. <laughs> they're not still making wood chassis, are they? It's not. Okay, yes they and can't no. Be. Yes and no. <laughs> it's not the cha- it's The word chassis is not accurate to describe what they do with the wood. The chassis itself is made of aluminum. Okay. Okay, and then there's the, this upright structure that goes on the chassis, and that's the wood. It's like laminated wood. It's fucking no, wood, it's wood. Wood. Wood, wood. It's yeah. wood. It's <laughs> proper. And then they hang the body panels onto the wood. Onto the wood. So it's it's a secondary structure. Mm-hmm. But yes, it's fucking wood. <laughs> it's, it's like wood. a body on frame car, but the body's made of wood, and then they put the metal skin on the outside, yeah. and that's metal. Yeah. Only, yeah. only in England. It's why. But but when you go there. Yeah. It's so charming that you you just go. Can I just give you money for something like anything? <laughs> yeah. Whether it's just like a, a shirt or whatever. <laughs> look, look. Oh yeah, there it is. That's it. That's pictures from like this year. <laughs> so that's the that's you can see the that's, sort of that's the probably structure. the grandson of the guy who worked there. No, yeah, in that corner, right? I when I went, yeah. I met a three generational yeah. family that was that all working there. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 And the smell in this place. It's kind of like going into a, like a distillery and you can yeah. smell that wood. Mm-hmm. Yep. That, that was, what it was what it was like. It was really, really cool. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's the most guitar-like that a car factory gets. For sure. Look at that. That thing, that, go back to that, that uh, machine, that specific It's bending, machine, the wood. He's, yeah, it's a wood bending yeah, thing. They've <laughs> had that machine since like 1920. That yeah. very thing has been u- wow. used every day since yeah. the 20s. I mean, look yeah, they're, the, la- they're, they, they're bonding and bending the right. wood. Look, the amount of tape wrapped around the handle of this ratchet, <laughs> yeah. the socket wrench, wow. Yeah, they just keep adding. <laughs> yeah, so you see here, this is, this is the structure supporting yep, yep. the actual metal pieces. That's amazing. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. And the factory is set up on a slight hill, so they push the bucks <laughs> Downhill from one station to so the next. So that's how they get it to the next place. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Brilliant. It's very yeah, yeah. it's simple. It's yeah. Yeah. Because in Ferrari they have like this electric floor, the you know conveyor yeah, belt yeah. that moves everything. Yeah. Probably cost a billion dollars. Yeah. Morgan doesn't need that. <laughs> that's they just awesome. they just need Clive. Clive, Clive, Clive is the electric floor. 
Yeah, no, I can't recommend highly enough going there. And if you've never driven to Morgan, it would be exactly yeah. the kind of thing that you like. Oh, I bet. Because yeah. you're going slow as could be, but no. you feel like you're in, you're, you know, yeah. Yeah. the Great Gatsby, basically. Yeah. No, that would be cool. Yeah. Would be really I cool. really recommend it. Good. Uh, we've got a few questions from our Patreon people for mm-hmm. John. All right. And uh, I haven't previewed them. So uh, uh, Michael Cosgrove says... What's on top of your list of cars that you still want to wow. drive or own? Okay, well, I've never driven a Mercedes 300 SL. Ooh. Go wing. Cook. They're very, very good. And I happen to know someone who has one. Yeah. Our, yeah. our buddy up yes, in Yes, you do. Yes. It's number 342 <laughs> in the collection. <laughs> well, of course. Um, that's one. That's that's very, very high on the list. Um, and I always, you know, I always wanted a, a 246 Dino. Oh, and I never, you know, I had a chance to buy one. I never did. I kind of regret it. Um, I think I'm they, past they it now. They went through the roof, and then they settled a little bit. Yeah, it's not a bad time to buy one. Actually, yeah, yeah. Well, if the right one came along, you never know. But They're very cool. That would be the answer to that question. Okay, yeah. all right. That might be the one that got away. Uh, Gunner Ray, yeah. Do you have one that got away? One? Uh, is there a car you either owned or yes. wanted to own, and now it's just total unobtainium? Yep. Uh, well, yeah. Nothing's unobtainium. It depends yeah. on how, how, how far you want to go. Uh, but um, yeah, I had a '56 Speedster. Oh, Sil- yeah. Silver with a red interior. And um, when I, I had it, a small car collection in the 80s, and when I got divorced, I sold everything. And it was one of those let's clear the decks kind of uh-huh. moments. And I always regret selling that car. So. I have a feeling, though, that now that you've got a bunch of miles on this Emery car, well, that a regular Speedster might disappoint you. Yes, because when I met Rod, I told him that story. Yeah. And he said, well, he said, let's see if we can make something that kind of takes its place. Yeah. And he, he far exceeded that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for that, sure. Those, God, those Rod's cars are awesome. Yeah. There's a reason it takes two years to get one of oh, those absolutely. things now. Myron Vernis, yeah, our friend. Do you know Myron? I do. Myron's the man. Yeah. He's the one yeah. who reminded me that it was your birthday this morning, so yeah, thanks we, for the um, tip. We uh, we judged the uh, Japanese cars at at Amelia this year. I was one of the judges with <laughs> oh, Peter cool. with Peter Brock and and Magnus. Oh my God, Magnus what a, Walker. So you, How about that, Myron, that, Peter Brock, and Magnus. No, no, Myron was showing. Oh, okay. He was yeah, showing yeah. one of his Japanese cars. Oh, what did he have? The Cosmo or something? Yeah, I can't yeah. remember the one. It was white, I believe. Yeah, that uh, yeah. sounds like a Cosmo. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah. So we, <laughs> you, we, Peter Brock, and, and Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, an unholy trio. <laughs> L- luckily, we had Peter because what you know, uh, what won for the Japanese. Uh, it was Bobby Rahal's uh, red 2000 GT, oh, and it yeah. was beautiful. You, you need to be John Oates' size to get in one of those things. That yeah. is a little car. Yeah, it, it, and it was turned out immaculately. There, those so. cars are very, very yeah. cool. But every time I've seen one in person, I'm like, it's this small? It's You can't believe how small they are. <laughs> the, in photos, they don't yeah. scale the same yeah, way. Yeah. It seems like they'd be like the size of an E-Type. Which is already a pretty small car because they kind of look because like they that. look like yeah, they an got E-type, that but you vibe. really got it. Yeah. It's like two thirds E-type. Yeah, They're yeah. tiny. Yeah, but Amelia's will, a good show though. So, a oh, question for everyone. Oh, uh, what is the greatest rock and roll car of all time? Ooh, go ahead. I'll I leave. mean, <laughs> I have to. Uh, it might be mildly self-serving, but I have to say, Countach. That's pretty rock and roll. I mean, it comes with a Coke mirror. <laughs> now, are we talking about cars that were featured in, like, rock and roll videos or just cars that we think are rock and roll? Yeah, does it have to have a rock and roll provenance? Right. Because if that's know. the case, then it's got to be the hand-painted uh, Janice, uh, Janice. Oh, um, the Janice Joplin, Joplin 356? 356, mm. yeah. Or maybe, like, the John Lennon Rolls. John Lennon Rolls. Yeah, right. okay. Which is at the um, at the Barber Museum in, in Alabama. Did yeah. John Lennon do a Mini Cooper? He had, they, they had did, Radford right? Minis. The Radford Minis. They had, yeah, John Lennon, they had Radford yeah. Minis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, yeah the hand painted one I think that's a that's a good one. Who painted Janis Joplin's car? I don't know, but the the people who own it now said that they um, the only thing when they got when they bought the car they realized it was that car, but it had been repainted. Mm. But inside the gas cap was, was still part the of the original paint. paint, and they used that. But the, you know they had pictures, of course, yeah. and they so they had it reproduced. Yeah. I, then the, and then it, they sold. Did it sell at Pebble, or was it just being shown at Pebble? It was, I remember it being on display at I Pebble, like in twenty fourteen or fifteen. Maybe? It was in a show at Amelia about yeah. four years ago. Yeah, what? A, that's a that's a cool, yeah. cool, cool car. It is. Yeah. Uh, does it say? It doesn't say who painted it, does it? No, no I don't think okay. so. 
Good question, though, Myron. Thank you for joining us, as always. <laughs> uh, James Cowley says, John's mustache is one of the more iconic images of the 70s. What is the automotive equivalent <laughs> of... Uh, oh, oh, of the, of your mustache in the seventies? Oh boy, the automotive equivalent of my seventies mustache? Yeah, I, I don't the, so I think Cadillac the Eldorado convertible, oh. brome, Actually, the brome. Yeah. I would say that's a pretty good yeah. statement. Yeah. It would have to be something with a vinyl top, right? Landau roof only. The Landau yes. roof. Right. <laughs> I feel like convertible. Maybe a, like the back part. half yeah. Landau roof. Just the thing with the with the weird S shape. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fake. opera window. That's the opera window. <laughs> right. Remember the remember it was it. Can, I think it was Cannonball Run. Two, <laughs> might have been one. Where, was it the one? Which is the one with Terry Bradshaw, where they have the fake monkey chauffeur? <laughs> I don't know. It's a Cadillac. I'm betting that's two because it's jumping the shark. Yeah, and like that's something you do in a sequel. Yeah, yeah, definitely that. No idea. Uh, also, uh, James says uh, if a big auto manufacturer released a skateboard in white EV platform, <laughs> could this bring about a new golden age of coach building? Uh, alter alternatively, our current regulations, safety standards, and testing requirements, too much for the niche industry to reemerge at a production scale. Uh, I'll take the second part last. Um, we have the Ultra Low Volume Manufacturer Act now, which, if you produce fewer than a certain number of units a year, uh, allows you to do almost whatever you want. Really? You, you don't have to do airbags. You don't have to do certain really? bumper height requirements. Yeah. That's... So people like Glickenhaus... Um, or uh, Ariel, Ariel really? the Ariel Atom, or companies That's, that make uh, um, reproduction, like uh, replica Cobras sure, and sure. stuff like that. You know, you can sell that stuff in, in uh, and not have to uh, do crash testing or other stuff that would be cost prohibitive. So That's cool. I think as, you know, just like John was saying, as these modern supercars become more ridiculous and more like each other, yeah. point and shoot, point and shoot, point and shoot, there will be a growing market for very niche analog uh, cars, and I think businesses will emerge to fulfill I that hope so. need. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, I mean, our our love of the, the internal combustion engine cars, and especially uh, exotic sports cars, I, I foresee them becoming the way people deal with horses. Yeah, recreationally. Recreational, totally yeah. recreationally. Yeah. And maybe competitively as, as well, you know. Well, the track country that. clubs are really exactly. interesting yeah. and far more popular, not necessarily than I would have guessed. I, I, could, have, I could have figured out that these would be yeah. popular things to do, but it seems like, um, like that... When everything else is dead, those those will yeah. will live on, and hopefully they they some of them at least will be affordable for semi regular folks. I don't want to have to buy a three million dollar condo with thermal. I did go to thermal. It, it's I, cool, I, isn't it? It's amazing. It's absolutely <laughs> the restaurant over is the, the best top. racetrack food, other than the sausages at Road America. It's the best racetrack <laughs> right, food ever. Right, right, right. The brats at Road America and the roast oh, corn. The best. Yeah, it's the best. I yeah. every time I go straight to the Brat Hut. Yeah. Every time I'm there, they have a I mean, Bratwurst hut, hut and a restaurant. No, no, <laughs> no. That's, the Bratwurst Hut is the restaurant okay. at Road America. <laughs> that's all they've got. Yeah. <laughs> Although, what's the restaurant that's like the racing bar in Elkhart Lake? Yeah, it's that. This that old. Um, it's, it was like a hotel yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. I stayed there, and I can't remember it. It's it got called. all the photos. That's where of everyone would, would hang yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's like the uh, it's like the lodge at uh, yeah. Watkins Glen, mm -hmm. or uh, it's like three different buildings, right? I stayed yeah. there. It was like yeah, white it was, with green it was shutters. Right there. I think it was a little pond or lake right there yeah. near there. Old yeah. school stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, and then about the skateboard and white EV platform, we talked about this with Brett Burke a couple of shows ago. Um, there, it, it, it's possible that we, we still have coach building going on right now. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. but Pininfarina and Zagato and Touring, are, they're, they're selling very small volume yep. stuff, and it's millions of dollars. It exists. Yeah. I, think we'll, I think we're kind of seeing it. Like, like Rivian, I feel like, is able to exist because the electric – vehicle systems are simpler than building an engine yes. transmission everything else granted it's a large scale coach built but it's like they had an idea they were able to get some simpler parts and then make something that kind of steps outside the norm so I think if there are coach builders that look at those platforms and like someone like Riven would sell them here's an SUV unibody they'll yeah. take their panels off I yeah. think we could probably see that happening have you driven any of the really fast EVs John? Um, I, w I did not know I actually haven't I haven't driven uh, I was driven in a Tesla, 
that was really quick. Yeah. Um, but I've never driven one. While you're in town, you should go to the PEC and try a Taycan Turbo S. Mm. They're they are they're so fast you will get nauseous. Yeah. I, you will. It's it's it. But it's an experience worth having. Just yeah, to be yeah. like, wow, technology is fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, Micah wants to know any artists that you would have liked to have collaborated with, but Ooh. never never have. Sure, tons. I mean, you've got uh, and you've got an enormous list of people you yeah. have collaborated with. Yeah. Um. Uh, I I was a huge uh, Curtis Mayfield fan, mm. and I play guitar like Curtis Mayfield, not as well, but um, he uh, he he was influential to me. Um. When, when in the early days of R&B because when I saw R&B performers every all the singers were singers usually singers with a backup group or a backup band he was a singer lead singer and a guitar player which was very rare it, it seems like totally normal now yeah. but in those days you, you didn't see uh, singers who played guitar and accompanied themselves and he had a certain cool way of playing played with his thumb uh, and I you know I always loved Curtis Mayfield but there's a lot of them you know a lot of people that um that I would, you know, I mean, the early blues men, you know, would have been a great experience to to have a chance to play with some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, I mean, you like, the resume is so ridiculous at this point. I mean, I've had a chance to play with some really great people. Yeah, yeah that's been awesome. Yeah, I uh, I can't wait to see. Uh, you learn something every time. I bet you do. What is the most What is the most what, most impressed you've ever been by another artist's performance, if you can recall? Oh. God, there's so many. Uh, I'll tell I'll tell you the the weirdest, craziest songwriting experience I've ever had uh, was with Ryan Tedder from One Republic. Oh, uh, big fan, that big, one. big fan of, of One Republic. Um, when he was living in Denver, and the band was based in Colorado, isn't that just? Isn't it really just? him well he's 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 the he's the, he's he's the driving the main, force the main, the yeah, main he's guy, songwriter right? singer yeah. yeah but the band you know he has a band but he does other things he writes for other people mm -hmm. he produces for other people um they they asked me to do a um a, a benefit show with them just to be a guest in denver a christmas thing uh, and we did it and it was fun while i when while i had him in a headlock i said hey man let's do a song together and he <laughs> i think he made a mistake by agreeing um but anyway he did and then one day um we finally, he said, because he was living in Denver, I was in Colorado. He said, come on down, we'll do something at the house. So I went down to his house and he had this amazing studio in the basement of his house. And we went down there and he, and he said, I have two and a half hours. He just, <laughs> oh he just kind of announced it to me. Uh -huh. And I said, well, all right. And, and, and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, I want to do something unique. That, you know, I'm with you for two and a half hours. Let's see what comes up. Yeah. And he goes, well, if we're going to do something, it's got to be something you've never done before. He proceeds to take the headphones, puts headphones on, spins around so I can't see him. And he's got, I don't know if you know about, obviously, modern recording with Pro Tools. You know? Sure. So he turns around, Pro Tools screen is here. I'm sitting where you're sitting, uh -huh. so I can't see him at all. I just see the screen. Next thing I know, I see these colored tracks appearing like rapid fire. And I'm sitting there, like going, I can't hear a thing. I don't know what key's in. I have no idea what style it is. I have no idea anything. You're just sitting there with your 58 Strat, like, huh? Oh, well, guess. no, I didn't even have a guitar. <laughs> I had my laptop. Okay. And so I said, well, fuck, I better do something. So I, I started writing lyrics. Okay. I had a title called Stone Cold Love, which I liked. Um, and I started writing lyrics. And I had no without idea. hearing anything. Without hearing what? anything, I had no idea whether the lyrics were suitable. I mean, he could be writing a love ballad yeah, for all yeah. I know, right? So, so I'm I'm just typing my ass off, just writing lyrics, and finally, after and is he like playing a keyboard into Pro Tools or just no? Just he's programming. Full, he's he's programming. programming. He's okay, pulling yeah. up samples. I'm sure yeah. doing all kinds of stuff. Finally, after about and literally, this went on for at least an hour. Really? <laughs> and then he spins around and goes, "Dude, check it out." And he cranks up this track, and it sounded like Nine Inch Nails meets uh, meets Jack White meets um, you know who knows. Yeah, it was heavy. It was really powerful. And so I took my laptop. I said, "Well, this is what I got." And he goes, "I love that." And so we put the laptop up. We got two microphones, and we had the lyrics. These just random lyrics. And he started singing. I started singing. And he said, "Yeah, try this. Try that." And two hours later, th we had a you song. You actually had a song. So then I said, oh man, this is, I said, I, I'm, this is really cool. I said, but how about we put a guitar part on it? He goes, I gotta go. <laughs> so he said, I'm, he said, I'm gonna send my engineer down. So his engineer came down and I sat there for another hour or so and I played, put a guitar solo on it and played some guitar parts. 
and that was it. Wow, that wow. was the song. <laughs> it was the most unusual. That's crazy. The most unusual it's like collaboration under pressure of songwriting. Ever. But it worked. It's really cool. Were you happy with the result of yeah, it? Yeah, it's on. It's on an album I did called "A Good Road to Follow." It's the lead track. Oh wow! Yeah, it's called "Stone Cold Love." All right, I'm gonna have to look this one up yeah. when I uh, when I get yeah. home. I can't play it because we'll get botted. But, oh right, you know. right, right. But uh, well, wow. that's that's me doing an acoustic version, which sounds nothing like the record, by the way. Okay. Yeah. But that's it's so cool. it's weird. Like the lyrics actually that's it right there in the middle. Yeah. The lyrics actually just kind of worked. Like you made it. We made, made it, it work. line up. Yeah, we had to adjust it a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, it, it kind of worked in a wow. weird way. Sometimes wow. that compression of time just like it forces you to create art. Well, you know, I, I'd never done anything like that. And he he did say he said he said I think he made a joke. He said I think he said he said if I was getting paid to do this, I'd spend more time yeah. on it. All right, then you charge by the hour. <laughs> Wow, I mean, that's the, crazy, you know, he though. gets he gets a bundle for, to do it to do songs with like Taylor Swift and blah blah blah. You know, I'm sure. So it was kind of a it was kind of a thing where he he wanted to do it, I wanted to do it, and and we both said let's just throw some shit against the wall, yeah. see what happens. You know? Have you ever tried to work with another artist where it just clearly didn't work? Yeah, not like the person wasn't talented or good, but like you just tried and you're like, I just I don't know, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah. It, it, we always get something, but it's sometimes I know, you know, I can I can already tell it's mm -hmm. it's not going to happen, you know. But yeah, you know. that's life, though, yeah, isn't it? Hey, you can't hit it out of the park every time, right? Yeah, yeah. Who are you? Uh, do are you rooting for anybody at uh, GP this weekend, or just gonna go hang out and have fun? Um, and enjoy well, you your know, I, I, um, Zach Brown invited me, so obviously I'm going to be putting on blue and orange. Uh, Hat or something right. like that, but I, you know, I, that's I'm, a good friend. I've been have. friends with Michael Andretti for thirty years, you know, and um, uh, also Chip Ganassi's an old friend of mine from back in the, in the old IMSA days. We were both racing IMSA at the oh, same wow. time, so yeah, I'm going to pop around the pits. I know a lot of people in racing, and one thing I, I love about the racing people is that they're such good people. You know, there there's no bullshit. They're just like, you know. They're great people, and and that's what I loved about racing when I was doing it. You know, is that when I could go to the track, no one cared whether I was a singer or you know a rocker. I mean, Paul Newman used to say stuff like that. Yeah, too. it's just everything. It just a totally different world, and people were, hey, it's the right when the green flag drops, the yeah. bullshit stops. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You either deliver or you don't. And you know? I think so, I think that's what Dempsey liked about racing as well. Sure, there's a big appeal to that when you're in a a business like ours, an entertainment business that. Where there's a lot of artifice and a lot of crap and a lot of, you know, a lot of this and promises that don't happen, yeah. And then all of a sudden you get out to the racetrack and here it is. Yeah, people are actually yep. serious about what yeah. they're doing right there. I love there. that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's going to be a good race. I think. So. Yeah. I think it should be fun. I think uh, IndyCar racing is super competitive. Yeah. I mean, serious competitive. And there's a my lot wife, of we were there's a lot of guys that can win on Netflix. And my wife yeah. was like, "Why don't they make them all drive the same car?" I'm like, "That's IndyCar, baby. <laughs> right. That's literally what <laughs> they've they done do that already." In IndyCar. Yeah, they've yeah. Got that. And yeah. and seriously, every weekend anyone can win. Yeah. Almost anyone can. Have win. Have you ever driven around Long Beach? Like um, the when it's a circuit? No, but I was there for the first Formula One race in '77. Oh shit. It's a cool track. Yeah, they let me have a go in one of the new NSXs to, oh, to really? actually drive around. Remember it. when they used to do the Toyota Celebrity Fuck Race? Yeah, yeah, I never did you it. Never got to do no, it. They oh man, they never invited me. I wish, oh, uh, I wish they would I bring wish that they back. I would do it they, in a heartbeat. Yeah, you probably do well. That that I do. You probably do well. Remember they used to have the pros starting behind the yeah, the they make them work through and everybody be hitting the wall and it there was, was so crash much contact. It was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was carnage. Yeah, no, we went through the winners and we went through the winners list once on this show and it was like a hilarious. Assortment of people, right. Alfonso Ribeiro like won like a whole <laughs> bunch twice. Of, he won yeah. twice, and it was a big right. spread. Twenty in between years between or something. Yeah. He raced when he was like twenty-one and one, and, and and took podium or pole, and then he won again twenty years later. Yeah, it's crazy. Three or something. Yeah, yeah. they cool. should. Why doesn't someone should bring that back? I mean, that seems like a there's a reality yeah. show there. Get those oh, GR sure. Corollas out there, man. Yeah, or right. Freaking eighty-six. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> I think maybe they should do it somewhere with less walls. There's a lot of things to hit at Long Beach. Like, yeah, but there's a lot of things you can bump off of and keep on going, right? <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's yeah. an it's a neat track. Yeah. It's the, the it, it actually I haven't been there in years. It's cool. Seriously, I haven't been there in a really long time. Yeah, it's cool. So. And it's and it's very I mean it's a whole fucking yeah. spectacle. It's great. It's, yeah, it's Southern California. Come on. Yeah. It's, it's where it all great. started. It's Bring back the Beverly Hills Speedway yeah. while we're at it. <laughs> that rules. That's go right. everyone go look up 
Cal- Southern California early 20th century racetracks. If you got there some you go. time, it's just crazy. Well, thanks for coming in, John. No, Happy thank you. birthday. This I appreciate was a lot of your fun. time. Hey, I couldn't think of a better thing to do on my birthday is talk about cars. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and next year in Newport, for sure. I, I'm going to be going back to yeah. run vintage uh, veteran cars. I want to go back fun. for the Concours as well. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah, if I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you should. It, you went last year? I didn't. No, I haven't gone yet. It was an awesome week. Yeah. I, I can't say enough nice things about those guys. It's just a fun town. It's a perfect town to do that kind of thing in. But I told Donald, I said, like, if you want to be Monterey, like, we need a hill climb. Like, you got to, we got to shut down Newport and have a, like a street sprint or like run along Ocean Drive at pace yeah. or something. Right, right. Some, That's a good know. idea. They own the town anyway. They yeah. might as well. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, that's our show, folks. We're well, back tomorrow you. with uh, regular car reviews. Uh, John, we really appreciate the time. Thanks, Matt. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest I of your birthday. It, thank you. And uh, bye, everybody.